Hello, I'm Mark Hedinger, and together we're going to build one of these, an improvised respirator mask. Because of the coronavirus, personal protective equipment is still in very short supply, and it is still putting our healthcare workers and people everywhere at risk of getting infected. Uh, that's why I've designed this mask. It is custom fitted, so it creates a very nice seal around the nose and the mouth, and it has a replaceable filter at the front. If you work in a hospital and you are currently reusing disposable masks or using t-shirts, bandanas, scarves in their stead, build yourself one of these until you can get hold of a proper mask and increase your chances of staying safe. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Examining the build, you'll see this is a fairly simple construction. The face piece is made from a 16 ounce deli container. Uh, these are made from number four LDP plastic. This thermoplastic has a vicat temperature. Uh, that's the point at which the material becomes malleable of only 86 degrees Celsius, meaning we can use hot water to form uh, the container for a precise fit. By now, you'll have noticed there are two valves at the top of the mask. They are made from soda bottles and they act as exhalation valves. So the mask will not lift off your face as you breathe out and it will stop your glasses or your goggles from steaming up. These are two extra long hair bands tied together and the inside of the container is lined with a few strips of self-stick vinyl foam seal. Now let's examine the filter. The cartridge pulls off very easily. It is made from a Coke bottle and a can of California Scents air freshener. Inside is a layer of electrostatic material from a HIPAA certified vacuum cleaner bag. A section I've cut out from a HIPAA vehicle cabin air filter, a couple of foam spacers that form a chamber to improve the airflow, and below that uh, two layers of pre-filter material from the same vacuum cleaner bag. Let's pop that back together. Now these filters, uh, these cabin air filters, they are generally rated 98% effective at filtering particles down to 0.3 microns in size. In comparison, uh, N95 filters are tested 95% effective at testing particles of 0.3 microns and larger as well. Uh, however, this only applies to HEPA and other anti-allergen certified filters. Uh, regular cabin air filters will only filter down to 0.5 microns and they are rarely layered with active carbon, which is another excellent filtering material. So in theory, we are achieving very effective levels of filtration, but in reality, it will depend on how accurately you follow directions and the level of detail and care in your craftsmanship. That being said, it is still just an improvised emergency mask. It has not been lab tested for NIOSH approval, and it does not guarantee NIOSH certified levels of protection. In other words, you are building this mask and are therefore solely responsible for its effectiveness 
Uh, your mask is not a safe guarantee of avoiding infection or illness, and you are using it at your own risk. Uh, let's quickly just look at the filter uh, in this little clear transparent mock-up that I've made, just so we can see uh, how the air really passes passes through the filter. Um, now, this is just kind of a mini version, mini see-through version of this, uh, just to show uh, and illustrate how the filter is built up. So the air will come in here. Um, it will go through this section of cabin air filter, as you see. The top layer uh, is a particulate filtering material. Then in the middle here, you'll see a little black ridge. That is a layer of active carbon. And then down here, the blue stuff, that is the HEPA anti-allergens, uh, anti-microbial layer integrated in the filter. Down here, again, the chamber and the pre-filtering material. So let's pop that back in. Uh, and as you see, that's how air will pass through this filter. Unlock the tap and pull the lid off to open it up. Same goes for these upper mouse here. I'm recording this on my antique iPhone, so I'm not sure about audio sensitivity. But you should be able to tell from the sound that they're working. You can also comfortably wear your glasses with the mask. I'm just going to show you with mine. And they don't steam up. I'm going to take this off. And there you have it. The Mod Mask, an improvised emergency respirator. This product is intended for those who want a high-performing DIY mask but don't have access to 3D printing. And many of you don't, uh, which is why I wanted to create a mask that is accessible to everybody. Some of the components used in this build may not be available everywhere in the world, 
But that's the great thing about these maps. They are highly modifiable. So if you're running into trouble finding an item on your list, simply improvise and adapt, and you'll be able to overcome that problem. That problem. For those of you that do have 3D printing in their hands, my good friend and fellow industrial designer, Arindra Singh, has created an adapter to attach 3M filters to the front of your masks. Now, this design is also suitable for scalable production, and if that's something that interests you, I will be happy to help. The mod mask performs really, really well, given its simplicity, and not counting cure times for the glues, to make one of these, you're looking at maybe two hours tops. Um, so if you require better protection than reusing a disposable mask and would like to find out how to make one of these of your own, uh, check out the full length tutorial. Thank you for watching and take care. Goodbye.